Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. You know, I heard him say, we should always praise the Lord because the, the songwriter said, when we all get to heaven. I, I, ain't you ready for that praise? Say, when we all get to heaven, we're going to be singing and shout. But we got to do it down here in order to be ready when we get up there where he is. So let's praise God while we can. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise the Lord. Sing the wonder love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion bright. Rejoicing, it will be when we all see Jesus. What we gonna do? We gonna sing and shout victory. Oh, right. 
get to heaven. Won't that be a blessing? What a day. What a day. I'll rejoice in. It will be when we all see Jesus. We're going to sing and shout victory. Here we're we going to do. Yeah. We're going to sing and shout. We, we're going to sing and shout. Praise the Lord and shout. Thank you, Jesus, and shout. Trouble's over and shout. We're going to sing and shout. Victory. Hallelujah, 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 get hallelujah. Get started. God you, bless Jesus. you, Deacon Long. Yes, I'm Lord. I'm sorry. One more. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. You go ahead on. <laughs> but I'm so excited. Let I was you about to get started. There. Go ahead. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I'm excited to hear you. You could have went on. <laughs> we could have sung it later. That's all right. And this other song I'm, I'm finna sing. I, I tell people all the time, uh, I like to sing this song about if I have my ticket. But I don't want nobody to get it all out of shape, you know. The only ticket you going to need is the word of God. That's the ticket you need. Now, don't run to the stores now and thank those, the ones that don't know no better. Go in there and buy a ticket and put it in their pocket and say, okay, this is my ticket to heaven. Uh-uh. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about search the word of God and get your ticket. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let's praise God. I love to praise him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If I have my ticket, Lord. Can I ride? Oh, if I have my ticket, Lord. Yeah. I said, if I have my ticket, Lord. Oh, ride away to heaven on that morning train. I said, if I have my ticket, Lord. And I ride, oh, if I have my ticket, Lord, can I ride? I said, if I have my ticket, Lord, can I ride, oh, ride away to heaven on that morning train? I said, this train is a holy train. Can I ride, oh, this train? Is a holy train. Holy, holy. I said this train, the holy train. Can I ride? I said, ride away to heaven on that morning train. I said, can I? Can I? Can I ride? Oh, can I? Can I? Can I ride? I say, can I, can I, can I ride? I say, ride away to heaven on that morning train. I say, if I have my ticket, Lord, woo, can I ride? Oh, if I have my ticket, Lord, can I ride? I say, if I have my ticket, Lord, can I ride? I say ride away to heaven on that morning train. I said this train is a holy train. Can't nobody ride that train. I said this train is a holy train. Can I ride? I said this train is a holy train. Can I ride? I said, ride away to heaven on that morning train. Woo! 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise him. Give him the glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all can give it up for the Lord better than that. I say, if I have my ticket, Lord, can I ride? I say, ride away to heaven on that morning train. I say, can I? Can I? Can I ride? Oh, can I? Can I? Can I ride? I say, can I? Can I? Can I ride? I say, ride away to heaven on that morning train. I say, if I have Come my on. ticket, Lord, can I ride? I said, if I have my ticket, Lord, can I ride? I said, if I have my ticket, Lord, can I ride? I said, ride away to heaven on that morning train. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you what, I'm working on mine. I'm working on it because I'm bound for heaven. Hallelujah! And I think we all want to go there. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give him praise. He is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I just want you to think about something. Can I have a little more on this microphone? Can I have a little more volume on this microphone? I, I just want you to think of something. Thank God for Deacon Long, Deacon Kenshin, my brother, and everyone here for allowing me to come today. It's a privilege and an honor. But I just want to talk to you just briefly about the past year and what we've been through. We've had the pandemic and we've lost loved ones. And there are member families that have lost their loved ones. But God has saw us through. I mean, you, you got to really think about that. Because he didn't have to. We could have died and been gone a long time ago. And for us to have the opportunity to be here in his house, gathered together. You said it in the previous song, sister, sing and shout. See, because the scripture says the joy of the Lord is my strength. You don't ever get too old to praise God. You ain't going to talk with me today, see. You ain't never too young to praise the Lord. You ain't too sophisticated to praise the Lord. I don't care the new suit you got on, your new hairdo you got, and your nails. God requires that you give him praise. He inhabits this from his people. It's your weapon that you use against the enemy who wants to hinder us from honoring our father. So I thank God. And when you discipline yourself, and make yourself praise God, breakthroughs begin to occur in your life. Deliverance and freedom. And it's where God called us to. Today, today I want to talk about walking in God's love. I noticed at the end, Deacon Long was really talking about that love. And it's something that we have to understand God requires of his people. So we're going to pray. Lord, we ask today for your Holy Spirit and his ministry through me to us. I pray our hearts be prepared to receive. God, you're so loving and so gracious and so kind and so patient. Yet, Lord, you have an assignment and a purpose for your people. I pray, God, we determine in our heart to receive wholeheartedly that which you desire to deposit into us. You yield a dividend, fruit from our lives, that we understand that as we grow in our hunger, Lord, you will bear something from our life that not only bless our households,
but bless multitudes. So today, Holy Spirit, reign, rule, and have your way. Bless us, Lord, as we glorify you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him another praise in the house. Come on, give him another praise in the house. Amen. 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 See, I'm a, I'm a worshiper and I'm a praiser. Like, I, I, it don't take me long. To, and I don't get too old. And I never get too sophisticated to give God praise. And I understand with some, it maybe rub you wrong. Maybe like it did with David's wife, Micah, who looked at him and said, why are you praising God like that? You got your garment on. You the king. You ain't supposed to praise God like that. You praise God any kind of way God give you to praise him. And it doesn't matter who look at you because God been too good to every last one of us in here. You're looking at an ex-alcoholic, ex-drug user, ex-criminal, ex-everything. I have no right to be here today. No right to be here. I heard a man say it's borrowed time. We call it grace. We call it mercy. Where God allowed me to be here in this pulpit because he saw me way back in the day here today. And I'm so thankful every day of my life. And wherever I go, I share it with somebody. He has privileged me to work with youth. And I've done it for 28 years in the system. And now it's residential foster care. And you'd be amazed at what they experience and the things that come their way with this sex trafficking that's running rampant in the world and all of these things that are going on. And God only wants somebody who will look at these youth and give them love. Let them know that I don't care what you've been through. God has a plan for you. We have to learn to walk in God's love. We got to learn to not be moved by what we see and what we don't see. But be moved by the opportunity God gives us to share his word with somebody. Come on, y'all. So this is the power that lives within us. And when he says, I want you to wake up every day realizing that it's a new day that he made for each and every one of us. It's not a day to complain. It's not a day to murmur. It's not a day to miss out on opportunities, but it's a day to rejoice and be glad. That's what he said. You got to rejoice and be glad because there's a power that worketh in you that wants to be released. And that's what we're talking about today. Walking in his love will cause that release into wherever you go. Whatever atmosphere you step upon, I don't care whether it's the workplace, it's the grocery store, it's out of the community, you have he that is in you that's greater than he that's in the world. And we thank God for salvation. Aren't you thankful to be saved and not lost to have an opportunity to honor the Lord? Let's go to the scripture. I know I kind of started. So, but the scripture comes from Colossians 1, verse 10 and 11. I don't know if we all have the same translations, so I'm going to read it from mine. And I, got the, I have the New Spirit-Filled Life Bible. Colossians 1, 10 and 11. Do, do we stand for the reading of the word or no? I, I didn't know. Okay. Okay, can we stand for the reading of the word? We'll just do a couple of verses. Colossians 1, 10 and 11. When you have it, say amen. Okay, uh, I'll read because I know we might have different translations. It says, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power for all patience, and long-suffering with joy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to begin by talking about the salvation experience. Because I think for some of us, we forget what that was like. Sadly, it's like, sadly, excuse me, it's like some marriages. You know when you first meet your spouse? the joy that you have, the excitement you have, and then along the way, it just be that's him and that's her. It shouldn't be that way, but it's like buying a new dress or a new car. That excitement that you had when you first bought it leaves after time. And this is why God wants us to return to our first works 
often. Because when you receive Christ, first the Bible says by faith, through great, by grace, excuse me, through faith are we saved. Not by works, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. So as far as salvation is concerned, we had nothing to do with it but receive. Look at your name and say receive. So that man wouldn't boast and brag on what he did or accomplished. It's all of the Lord. And it's fitting because Deacon's doing communion today. We're talking about this Savior who the Bible calls the suffering servant. The messenger of the covenant. The pierced one. The lowly king. The one that said, I'll come down in the form of flesh and die for you. When none of you and I were fit to, he said, I'll go. When you turned your back on me and rejected me, I'll still go. When you spit in my face and blindfolded me, I'll still go. When you refuse to hear me, I'll still go. Because the crowning of creation is man. And he loves us so much. When we understand what he endured for you and I, you'll never forget that experience. Because there was a power and an encounter that you experienced that you will never experience ever again when we met the Lord. And it wasn't our love for him. Never think it's what we did. The Bible declares that it's always his love for us. And when you recount and reminisce and reflect on this experience, as I often do, it's something that is produced in you that you can't resist. You can't stop. It's just a flowing of love and joy that you want to share with somebody. And I know folk won't understand, and sometimes family won't understand, but you have to share this with somebody because he's too good. When you think about what he saved you from, just for a moment, just reflect just for a moment what the Lord saved you from. I know we give testimony, but some of us ain't told about everything. We ain't, we ain't told about everything, and you ain't got to. Just you and God. But you know how deep in it you were. And the Bible said it didn't matter how dirty it was, he reached his loving arms down and picked us up. You better hear what I'm saying. So it is this attitude of gratitude. And I heard Deacon Long say this too. It's more than words expressed. It has to be something that comes from your life. That's what walking in his love is. It's it's me expressing to him that I'm going to show you how I appreciate you by how I live. Because there are a lot of people that are talkers. You know people that talk. You know they talk. They talk. And that's all they do. Talk. Talk. But when you understand God and his love for us, it's truly, y'all, remarkable. And along this journey, because I'm telling you this, the Bible says to present our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, right? Which is our reasonable service. He says to be not conformed to what? this world, but to be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. That's where the enemy attacks all of us at. See, he wants you to be focused on the pandemic and what we lost and what we didn't have and what we should have had and all of that stuff. And you have to rebuke him and shun him in his place because God has been too good to us. And the scripture says it this way, that we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Let me tell you what's so powerful about that. You know why you're not distressed? Because the trouble is on every side. And you haven't allowed it to enter into your mind. See, if you keep your mind, God will keep you in perfect peace. And you're able to walk in his love and bless as many as God would desire you to bless. You have an assignment. You have an assignment. You have, everyone has an assignment of people God has just for you. So when we learn and we realize that in all my getting, because I've come to him and, and, and once I was a foreigner and on the outside and doomed for hell and, 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 and eternal separation, he's received me and I'm so thankful because I knew he shouldn't have. 
I knew he shouldn't have. I want you all to know God shouldn't have saved us. I'm going to stay right there for a minute. Because if there's anyone in this room that feels Jesus should have, you're already misunderstanding God's word. We all deserved H-E-L-L. So you have to humble yourself and realize that this God gave me a way out and offered himself when I was undeserving. That's what the getting means in understanding that I'm unworthy and undeserving of his love. There was a man that had a problem with his mouth, but he was the rock. And the Bible said that he was on a boat and he was a fisherman. Y'all know who I'm talking about, Peter. So Jesus comes and says, okay, Peter, now this man is a fisherman by trade, profession. He knows what he's doing. Well, how many of us know when you know what you're doing, there's one that knows more? I mean, y'all better hear what I'm saying. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. So Peter hadn't caught anything. So Jesus gives him instruction on where to throw the net. He obeys the Lord. I want you to follow me. Now, this is important. He follows Jesus, and he begins to catch fish to where the net was so filled, it began to burst. Then they put it on the boat, and he had so many where the boat began to sink, I believe. Right, Deacon Kitch? Now, what blessed me in addition to that part of the story is what Peter said. It goes with what I just said about unworthy and, 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 and undeserving. Peter said, get away from me. I'm a sinner. This is what he said. I said, well, why did he say that? I mean, the Lord just blessed him miraculously. Why would you say get away from me? I'm a sinner. Because the Bible says the more we walk and grow in God's love, the more unworthy we know we are of it. Y'all better, I hope y'all didn't miss that. The more and deeper we grow in God, the more unworthy of it we know we are. See, that helps you minister to people. See, because sometimes we'll look at folk and we judge them for how they appear to be. They may be a drunk, they may be a prostitute. They may be a murderer. They may be any type of person that's outside of God. And the Lord wants us to look on them like he looked on us. And when we realize the mercy and the grace that's on our life and how unworthy we are, we will share the gift of this love with as many as we can, y'all. I'm telling you, I felt something in. I'm telling you, that's the power of God that he wants to release in your life. But I put this down. Here's where we got to come to a place in today's church. Because there are some, well, there are more than some, that come to church. But you must come to God. You come to the pew and you hear the message, but you don't receive what you hear and you leave the same way you left. The Lord is saying, come to me. Yes. See, because when you're not teachable, you're not reachable. He can't reach you because he can't tell you nothing. He can't teach you. And I know you're the man and you got it going on, brother. And you know, lift some weights and you got a little strong, you know. You know, we get, you know. But God wants you to humble your big old muscular self. Y'all ain't going to hear me, is you? You ain't going to hear me. God wants you to humble yourself because he has something for you that will bless your life if you're teachable. Again, I got to go back to Deacon Long. He's up here and he ministers to you on the assignments and the upcoming events. This is why God calls us to be active in church and in ministry. Because how are you going to be faithful somewhere else and you ain't even faithful at home? Y'all ain't going to talk with me. You ain't going to lie me back how you did. You ain't going to lie me back to you. And I'm not saying you're not faithful here. But what I'm saying is that priority speaking. The Bible says when you walk in his love, in God's love, first things first. And you got to take care of home. How can you faithful outside and you ain't even faithful in home? You're needed. You, you fail to realize your value. You're a significant sister. You're important. 
You're a blessing to the house. You know when you're gone and on vacation, you ought to be missed. Y'all ain't hear me, is you? If I'm gone and I come back and y'all say, there you go. He done came out. I got, I'm, so I'm doing something wrong. If I'm on vacation and come back, y'all be, oh, Pastor Joe, we miss you. We love you. That's what God is saying when you walk in his love. You are one that has understood that it's adding to more than taking away. Let me tell you what I mean. There are some that you got to encourage and say hello to and speak to first all the time. And the moment I don't say nothing to you first, I'm the one got the problem. Well, could you speak to me first one Sunday? And I said, God bless you for 18 years straight. And this Sunday, I don't say nothing. You say, I got the problem. Y'all, it's, it's, it's a two-way street. This is why we mistake prayer. Because we think prayer is one way. Because we just on our knees. God, give me this. And give me that. And God, give me this. And God, you know. And the Lord says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Prayer is two-way. You speak to me. Now, come on, somebody. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. And I got to speak to you. See, because you don't give me the direction, I give you the direction. So the purpose of prayer is that in all your ways you acknowledge me. And what do I do? I direct your path. That's what walking in his love is. It's humbling ourselves and realizing that if we're not teachable and we're not able to be taught, he can't reach us. We have to know this, see, because in this day and age, the Lord is wanting us to take his yoke upon us and learn. Some of, us have lost, some of us have lost our appetite. God gave it to me years ago. I call it spiritual anorexia. If you know an anorexic, they make themselves, y'all know what it is. So what happens in the church is some of us have just lost our hunger. Somewhere along the way, I told you how your first love and then over time, you got to return to your first works. The Lord never changes. It's we that have to allow him to change us. And he wants us to desire him above all else. Because God is beneficial in the beginning, along the journey, and in the end. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he knows best. We just have to humble ourselves and know that I'm ready, Lord, for you to reach me because now I can be taught. This is what his purpose is, to grow in his grace. Grow in his grace. I call it a relational fellowship. Now, I got to stay there just for a minute because there's a difference from a fellowship and a relationship. And again, I see the table that Deke and the deacons have prepared. And see, we have to understand this, that God calls us to a communion. A communion. A common union. That's not one. That's two, when it's you and the Lord. That is a relationship, a bond, a chemistry, a fellowship. When I receive the Lord, I am his relationally. But if I refuse to walk in obedience, in his love, I renege on the fellowship. There is a difference. Because you have what you call carnal Christians. And for the sake of me, I still haven't figured it out. And I'm not trying to get God to change his mind. But it's like, Lord, a carnal Christian? Yeah, a carnal Christian. One that lives for his or herself. But God still loves them. And they're still saved. But they forfeit the treasure while they're living. That one who's walking in his love receives. So the relational fellowship is one that's vibrant. It's active. And it says yes to God's will every day of his or her life. It's the one that God will bless every step you take. I mean everywhere you go. I'm telling you, when you understand the power of in this fellowship because of your relation to him. You allow nothing to interfere with walking in his love. Sometimes family won't even understand. 
your level of commitment to God. For David stood up against Goliath. The Bible said he was a little old boy, a little old lad, and Goliath is this nine-foot giant, and he had a brother named Eliab, and he spoke against his brother saying, oh, you think you cocky and you bold. Isn't it a shame when you need encouragement from the same people that peep down to you? I mean, when you need someone to inspire you and lift you up, they misread you and think that you're into something for the wrong reason. This is what I'm talking about. It happens sometimes from those who are closest to you. So we have to stay focused and walk in God's word because I got to share something with you. Knowledge is not power. Oh, I'm going to go somewhere now. I know we've heard that all our life. Knowledge is power. No, it's not. I'll give you an example because I can know how to put something together and not put it together. Where's the power? Applied knowledge is power. I'll say it again. You can know the word and not walk in it. Where's the power? Okay, I'll give you this scripture. He says to not just be hearers, but what? Okay, come on, Deacon Kid. That's the word. See? Now you understand. So it's applied knowledge that's power. Not power, it's, uh, not, not knowledge itself. Because too many of us are coming and we're hearing. And we're hearing. And we're hearing. And God is saying, I want you to walk in my love. But we're hearing. And, and we're hearing. And, and, and we're hearing. You know, you tell your child, go in there, boy, and wash them dishes and back in that flow. Yeah, I heard you. And he goes sit right on the couch. What'd he do? Nothing applied. See, this is why we have to come to God. Some of us are just coming to church and we think it's okay. No, 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 no. You got to have a relationship, a relational fellowship with God. You got to have the heart to really hear what is the Lord saying? What, what, what is he speaking to me? What, what, what is his assignment for me? I want to be faithful, Lord, and, and I want to do what your will says. See, this is what love is to me. God showed me love is selfless. It's endless, unconditional. And the last one I love is real. So that's some folk that think they make you think they love you. Y'all, they just as phony as two right hands. Y'all heard me? They just as phony as two right hands. And see, God show you that not to render evil for evil, but to overcome evil with good. So you got to pray for them folk and still walk in God's love. But there's something to say, yeah, baby, I got your back. And yeah, bro, I'm with you. And as soon as you walk away, they're stabbing you in the back. So you have to understand, though, God's assignment in it. Because sometimes we'll run from it too soon. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. We'll run from it too soon. Let me tell you what I mean. If you bake a cake, and women, y'all do it all the time. If you bring the cake out of the oven too soon, what happens? So sometimes God sets the fire up. He's the orchestrator of it. And he designs it for you to be shaped and molded. You just need to be a little more seasoned. You know when you cook out Deacon Kitchen, the, the meat don't taste right unless you put that seasoning on and let it sit in the refrigerator until the next morning. So God wants you to be seasoned. He wants you to suffer a little bit more. Come on. That is the way you walk in God's love. God will set it up. He'll set it up just like that. And you'll say, where's God? And a lot of times we blame the devil for what God is doing. Oh, my God. Nehemiah, Nehemiah, Nehemiah. The Bible said Nehemiah, and his name means the Lord comforts. The Bible said that he had to lead the people in rebuilding Jerusalem. They had just came out of Babylonian uh, captivity. And everything was destroyed. The temple, the land, the walls. But he had rebuilt the temple. And they had rebuilt the city. But what, what remained was the wall. They, they were in rubble and just trash. And, and then God allowed opposition to taunt them. What I love about Nehemiah, he was a man that was bold, that was strong, a praying man that was committed to walking in God's love. And see, sometimes when God gives you assignment, He'll allow the enemy to whisper, not even whisper, but to start shouting things in your ear. You ain't going to be able to do that. You can't do that. How you going to do that? You ain't got no help. Stop doing that. Don't do that. And you'll go to hearing him and let him talk you out of what God has for your life. Deacon Long told me when this pandemic hit, he said he didn't let it affect him. He said, because, and he was so right, 
churches, a lot of churches, ours too, didn't have manner in which to get the message beyond the walls. He said he just got the room he went to thinking, well, we can use this, YouTube, this, 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 and we're not going to let the enemy cause us to be mad, and we're going to look at it in the right light. We're going to allow God to bless us to now be able to get this message where it's getting to more people than it would have. Come on, somebody. See, the enemy was speaking to you through people. So that's what Nehemiah had to do. He had to realize, look, uh, you got to have somebody that's just committed. And see, when someone committed walking to God, love, Paul said, as I follow Christ, y'all follow me. This is the blessing on the ministry. And we have to see it that way. Because, see, with the walls... In Nehemiah's day, they built it in just a little over 50 days. That's miraculous. See, because there's nothing too hard for God. And he allows the trials and tests to strengthen your character. He allows it for you to know that he's still there with you. And you know what? I don't care how many times you fall. Well, Pastor Joe, I'm strung out and I keep missing it and this keeps happening and I keep falling down. God don't love me no more. The devil is alive. I don't care how many times you fall, get up. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I don't care how many times you miss it. I don't care how many mistakes you make. Just get up. A just man falls what? Seven times. But he gets back up again. If you can look up, that's the God I'm talking about. It's something about love that'll cause you not to wallow in it. It'll cause you to realize my God loved me too much. I don't care how far I've fallen. He loves me too much. And the same love, God will pick you up. He'll use you to pick somebody else. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. This is what we're talking about. I'm determined to walk in God's love. He's been too good to us, y'all. Come on, reminisce on that just for a minute. He's been too good to us. God has been too good. When I get tired and I feel like I can't do that, I say, no, no flesh, no. I have to die to the flesh. I got to die to the flesh. I got to die to the flesh, y'all. I got to die to the flesh. See, because the flesh never dies. I got to die to it. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. The flesh never dies. We're going to live with this man for the rest of our life. But we have to die to it. So whenever he wants to have his way because he ain't your friend, he don't care nothing about you, you got to say, no flesh, uh-uh, I'm saying yes to God. I'm walking in his love because he's been too good to me. How many of the living of hands can say God has been good to you? That's everybody in the room. Everybody in the room. God has spared me from things. Oh my God. Oh my God. Mother, oh my God. And I ain't ashamed wherever I go. Because I know different places praise different ways. I'm going to praise the way I praise all the time. I get crunk in this thing, y'all. But if I get loose, oh, I'm sorry. I said again, I get crunk in this. I get loose. You better hear what I'm saying. God been too good to me. If you be ashamed of me before men, we don't praise him that way in here. Well, who is you? You ain't God. Oh, I better get ready to get out. I better, who you ain't God? Who who is you to tell me how to praise God? See, when you walk in His love, you do it His way. You don't do it man's way. You don't do it auntie way and uncle way and mom and daddy way and brother way. You do it God's way. That's what you do. So all I want to do today is just encourage you in God's love. You're special. You got to know you're special. I ain't saying this to just fill your head up. I'm telling you this because it's the truth. God got something special for you whether you're young or old. And I want you to realize your true identity. God ain't finished with you. I don't care how many mistakes you made, how many times you've fallen. Just realize he's there. He's there to pick you up. Yes, he'll wash you off and he'll forget it just like the Bible says. The challenge is that we fail to forgive ourselves when he already has. Parents, be more forgiving to your children. Oh, Lord, I don't know where that came from. We're too hard on them. I'm not saying don't discipline and don't do your parental duties. But what I'm saying is, be forgiven. They're, they're just, they're, you know what, they're just big old usses. They're just big old usses. They're just big old usses. Okay? And when you are more forgiving and you're more encouraging and you speak life into them, 
they all stand up and say, my daddy and mommy spoke something to me, even when they're not doing. See, this is what walking in God love does. You know no man according to the flesh. That's what the Bible says. That simply means that faith calls those things that are not as though they Your son could be going to jail. You say, you know what? You're going to be successful. Tell your daughter, I don't care what's happening out there, but I see you. in whatever light God has given you, I'm telling you what's going to happen. The power of what you speak. Because life and death is in the power of your tongue. And when you walk in God's love, you're delivered from complaint and murmuring. You begin to speak life into people. You don't even understand it. You just walk around and just speak life. You give them gifts. And they begin to hear that. And then it begins to become a part of them. And what you speak to them, they speak to other people. And then the blessing just spreads like wildfire. And that's the kind of God we serve. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 I'm going to have to end, y'all, because I'm telling you, I, 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 oh, my God, I'm just thankful. Just thankful. For you who are thankful, if you don't mind, can you stand in your place right now? I, I, I'm done with the message. I just want you to wave to God if you're thankful. If you're thankful. If you're thankful. D, I'm finished with the message. Do you want me to do the type, type, type of shit or you want to wait till you come up? Okay. Just let them know you're thankful. Could you play a little music, sis? Just a little, little, little ministry music to us. Sometime we need to hear God do an invitation to discipleship. God is good, I'm trying to tell you. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. God is too good. God has been too good to every one of us in here. Men don't cry. The devil is alive. When you go to thinking about the goodness of God, when you go to thinking about the goodness of God, and how good it come on somebody, you can't help but be beside yourself. I've not been in the shower, been at the table, driving the car, and burst out in tears. Because I go to thinking about the goodness of God. Invitation. Now it's your time, invitation. For you who don't know the Lord, don't have a relationship with him. Simply need prayer. Now it's your time. When he came in my life, y'all, oh my God. I ain't never been the same. A lot of people don't know my story. I'll say this piece of it without being specific. And only my wife knows this. I was on the run to get back to Florida. The only reason why I came back in 1993. And thank God he cleared everything up. You mean to tell me I'm not going to praise and honor him when I know where I should be? So now it's your time. Just another minute. Anyone? They that call upon the Lord, the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Dig and long. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. so good.
just want to thank you. I just Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just want to tell God thank you. Because he's been so good. I say he's been mm, mm, good. Oh, Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you uh, for blessing us, to remind us of, your, of his goodness. Sometimes we need to reminisce and see where God has brought us. We've been running and, and so busy every now and then we need to look back and see where we was in our midst and see where God has brought us to and we should rejoice in the fact that God not us, it was God that blessed us nobody but Jesus we come to the table of remembrance to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. I heard someone said, if you missed it from the pulpit, we hope and pray that you can get it at the table. Because this is to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus which is the essence of the gospel. Yes. And we are so thankful that God, Jesus himself, left this ordinance for us to do into remembrance Amen. of him, Amen. to show forth his death and suffering uh, until he come again. And that's why we come as a, as a memorial to him, a time of remembrance. I often say, this is a time, we often say that I'm not worthy to partake of the Lord's Supper. And I would agree with you. But it is God that make us worthy. So at this time, as we prepare uh, well, this communion, this is a time, if you had an order, something went on in your life last night or this morning, you got time uh, to have a conversation with God. Because the God that we serve, he's an instantaneously God. He can fix whatever you feel that is that keeping you from partaking of his body and drinking of his blood. So look within yourself. And be prepare yourselves for his body and his blood. At this time, we have the prayer over the cup and the loaf.
First Corinthians. You can go, you can come change your place, sister. 11, 26 through 29. Paul says, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord death until he come. So then, whosoever eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. He says, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. God left his word. One thing I'm excited about this Corinthian passage, he said that everyone ought to examine themselves. Not the preacher, the deacon, or whoever it is, that is a personal thing between you and God. So that's why we is not in a position to tell you that you cannot partake of the body and blood of Christ. You should examine yourself. And go before God Amen. Amen. and ask him, Lord, make me worthy Amen. That's right. That's right. to partake of your body Amen. and drink of your blood. And God is able and willing to honor your requests. Jesus was up in the upper room with his disciples eating the Passover meal. After the meal was finished, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And he blessed it. He said, this is my body. It has been broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And they all ate together. Likewise, he took the cup. He said, this is the new covenant, the new testament in my blood. As often as you do this, do it in the remembrance of me. And they all drink together. After supper, they sang him, and they went out to the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go out to, but we're asking you, take the Lord with you everywhere you go. 
We are also asking you to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. While we was deep, deep in our mess, Jesus died that we might live. Pastor. Amen. I'm all right, right here, deep. Amen. I want to thank God again for today. We give honor where honor is due. I pray you continue to walk with the Lord and be encouraged to walk in his love. And this is not the only time. God will gather us together again and we will enjoy every time he does it. Let's get ready. Father, we thank you today and we bless you for this inspiring encounter that we have enjoyed. We know it's all you're doing. And Father, we humble ourselves to realize that it's not us, but it's your love in us that makes this happen. And Father, we pray, God, that as we exit today, that we are encouraged and inspired and blessed in such a profound way. We pray, God, you cover us until we meet again. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God, we with you. grace of God to sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest root and abide with us henceforth and forever let us all sing Amen